In this video, uh, what I'm going to talk about is a thermochemistry problem where we're looking at an ideal gas uh, that's expanding adiabatically and reversibly. And what we're going to try and do is calculate the work, the heat, the change in internal energy, right, the delta E, and then also the, the delta S of the system, the delta S of the surroundings, and the delta S of the universe of this uh, 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 system. So there's a few things that we'll initially want to, to, to write out just for ourselves, right? So we have our initial volume is equal to 10.0 liters. Our final volume is equal to 20.0 liters. The number of moles is equal to 1.00 moles, right? Our initial temperature is going to be equal to 25.0 degrees Celsius, which is 298K, right? And so the thing to think about for an adiabatic expansion, right, is that the volume is going to change, the pressure is going to change, and the temperature is going to change, right? So all of those are going to be changing, and they're not going to change in a very easy way uh, compared to, you know, uh, um, you know, the other types of problems where that, that we may have already looked at, right, where we're looking at constant pressure or constant volume or, you know, constant temperature, right? In an adiabatic process, all three things are changing. So there's a, a few different equations that we have to apply in this specific case right here. Um, and then also, sorry, uh, got sidetracked there, right? So the initial pressure is 2.46 atmospheres, right? So that's not directly given in this problem. You can calculate that just simply using the ideal gas law with the 10 liters, the 298K, and then the one mole. So we have that initial pressure of 2.46 atmospheres. Now for the final pressure, right? So in an adiabatic case, what you have to think about is the fact that the, the, the relationship of the pressure and the volume um, is going to be related to uh, a, a superscript, right? A, a, um, an exponent of uh, gamma um, in this case right here, right? And so the, the relationship is P1 V1 to the power of gamma is equal to P2 V2 to the power of gamma. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is gamma, right? So gamma is the ratio of the heat capacity at constant pressure over the heat capacity at constant volume, right? So gamma is equal to Cp over Cv, right? So if you're if you've been given both of those values, or you know if you've only been given this, you know one of them, you should be able to figure out what the other one is, kind of, right? If we assume ideal gas conditions, because we're working with an ideal gas, right? We exactly know what Cp and Cv are, right? So Cp, as you may recall, is equal to five halves R. And right, and R is the ideal gas constant, right? And then CV is equal to three halves uh, um, R. And so if we take that and we plug that in here, right, we have five halves R over three halves R. What we do, right, we cancel out the Rs, we cancel out the halves. And so what we get is that gamma for an ideal gas is five thirds. And so now, right, if we're trying to calculate, you know, one of the different components, so like we are right here, right, for, for PF, what we have is that PF is going to be equal to right p1 v1 to the power of gamma over v2 to the power of gamma. So if we plug in the values that we have, right, to figure out what the final pressure is, we have 2.46 atmospheres times 10.0 liters to the power of five thirds over 20.0 liters to the power of five thirds. And so we calculate that out. What we get is that the pressure at the end is going to be 0 0.775 atmospheres, right? So that's P, P final. So now, right, temperature final, we can just simply use the ideal gas law to do that, right? So that's just simply going to be, you know, P, PF, right, the final pressure times the final volume over the number of moles times the ideal gas constant. So that's going to be 0 0.775 atmospheres times 20.0 liters over 1.00 moles times 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole per Kelvin, right? Liters cancel, atmospheres cancel, moles cancel. So all we end up with is Kelvins up top, and so what we get is that the final pressure is going to be 189 Kelvin in this case right here. So now we know what the overall conditions are. One thing we can do just to make our lives a little bit easier, right, is we can just simply calculate delta T uh, for ourselves, right? So that's just simply going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So that's 189 Kelvin minus 298 Kelvin. 
and so that comes out to being negative 109 Kelvin in this case right here. Now, working our way through the problems, one thing to, to, to point out and to discuss is that for these values, right off the bat, we can say are zero, right? So right off the bat, in an adiabatic process, Q is equal to zero, right? That's a, that's a characteristic of, adi of an adiabatic process, right? Is that the heat is zero, right? Q is equal to zero in this case right here. So we know Q is equal to zero in this case right here. That also lets us know, right, that delta E is going to be directly equal to whatever work we're doing in this case right here. Now, jumping ahead a little bit, right, if we're looking at the entropy values, because we're talking about something that's a reversible process, we know that delta S universe is going to be equal to zero as well. Now, delta S universe is equal to the delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surroundings, right? So from there, right, we know delta S system plus delta S surroundings. And so then that means, right, that delta S of the system is going to be equal to negative delta S of the surroundings. Now, because Q is equal to zero, right, that automatically means, right, that delta S system is going to be equal to Q over T. And it doesn't matter what the temperature is, right, because Q is going to be equal to zero in this case, right? So even if we say 298 Kelvin, or even if we say, you know, 189 Kelvin, right, it doesn't matter because delta S system is going to be equal to zero. And because delta S system is equal to negative delta S surroundings, because delta S universe is equal to zero, that also means that delta S surroundings is equal to zero, right? So right off the bat, just simply in, the, in a straight adiabatic reversible process, right, Q is equal to zero. And because Q is equal to zero, right, delta S is going to be equal to zero, delta S system is going to be equal to zero. Because we're talking about a reversible process, right, that's going to tell us then that delta S universe is going to be equal to zero. And so because delta S universe is equal to zero and delta S system is equal to zero, that means that delta S surroundings also has to be equal to zero, right? So, so straight up, just all four of those are done. So the only math that we have to do is just simply calculating the work now. And so in this case right here, right, the work um, is going to be N times CV delta T, right? And so that's the equation that you would use for uh, calculating the work of an adiabatic process. Um, and so we can plug everything in that we have, right? So N um, is 1.00 moles. And then CV, right, we're talking about an ideal gas here, so that's going to be 3 halves R. So 3 halves times 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin times delta T, right? So that's going to be negative 109 Kelvin in this case right here. And so what we get is that work is going to be equal to negative 1,360 joules. And that's also going to be the value that we have for delta E, right? And so that's the, the, the easy process for calculating all of those different values for an adiabatic and reversible expansion of an ideal gas.